morning, everybody. We're going to get started a little bit early because um, some of our speakers have to uh, go to other places, and they, they generously gave of their time, and so we want to uh, we honor that. Um, I'm Mike Peasley. I'm the president of the Nam Knights uh, Motorcycle Club Merrimack Valley chapter that's based here at the Legion, and I'd like to thank you all for coming to our first, uh, what we hope will be an annual, uh, reads to remember our veterans here at Drake It. Um, they asked me to say a few words, and they emphasize for some reason the word few, so I'll try to be short and brief. And this isn't really wreath-related, but I'll just relate a story on that topic uh, that, I, um, that I have. Um, I got a chance to meet Scott Crossfield uh, a couple years ago. I don't know if anybody knows who he is. Um, he was a Navy pilot. Uh, he was also a test pilot. He was at Edwards Air Force Base during the heyday when uh, they essentially made the movie right stuff. Chuck Yeager and those guys. Um, there were a lot of egos at that time, and uh, Scott was flying the X-15. He had twice broken the sound barrier, and each time he did, Chuck would go up and fly again and break it ahead of him. So there was a little back and forth going on. And re maintenance and reliability wasn't what it is today, so uh, a lot of times they would come back, they would have a problem with the aircraft. And in that same ego theme, um, they, nobody wanted to stop the aircraft on the runway and get towed in. So they would try to roll it off the taxiway to the hangar. And uh, the catch was, because the engines weren't running, you only had three pumps on the brakes for hydraulics. Well, Scott, uh, as when I met him and as he was relating the story, he has an emergency, and he knows Chuck's on the ramp, and he rolls the plane up, and he says, as I'm coming up to the front of the hangar door, I'm trying to think, did I pump the brakes two or three times? Turns out it was four. <laughs> And he, uh, him and his aircraft proceeded to strike the front of the hangar door and go right through it. Um, more of that story is you always know when to stop. So I will, uh, <laughs> I promise you, when, it, when you see me getting near the hangar door, somebody raise your hand and I will stop. <laughs> Again, the emphasis on few. <laughs> Tough crowd. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming. I especially want to thank the folks that are going to speak this morning to make this a special event. Um, give you some background uh, around the country, uh, REITs Across America is a program, but there are a lot of different programs. In fact, right here in our local area, there are a lot of communities that are doing the exact same thing. They're taking REITs and they're taking them out to uh, memorials, to cemeteries, uh, to remember everybody who has served and probably just as important, those who are currently serving. That will folks that are downrange right now through the holidays that are not gonna be home with their families. Uh, his, we have uh, routinely gone north to Boscoin, to the New Hampshire State Veterans Cemetery, and we've placed wreaths up there and with the Blue Stars Mothers. And that is a terrific program. In fact, so terrific that it's just continued to grow and grow and grow. And the last couple of years we were there, there were just um, almost more wreaths than, I mean, more volunteers than wreaths. And I don't know that for a fact, but it was certainly a, a, a tremendous crowd. And we thought to ourselves, why not bring this program back to Drake it, back to our, our own community in some way, shape, or form? So that's what we're doing today. We're bringing the, this uh, program back, but we've adapted it a little bit. We thought about it and we said, you know, it would be great if we, uh, we had a breakfast and we had a gathering like we have right now and we're in a comfortable environment and we could um, kind of mark the occasion and then we'll take these wreaths that you see up front, we'll take them around the town and we'll put them in very obvious places and appropriate places, memorial parks, the entrances to cemeteries, as a visual reminder for the folks not only to honor and remember the location where we put them, but also for everybody that sees them through this holiday season to remember there are veterans out there right now as we uh, speak, serving our country and having served our country. So, without further ado, <laughs> Uh, I'd like to invite uh, Colleen Gary to come up and, uh, and say a few words. Thank you. Good morning. Merry Christmas to everyone. It's, uh, it's, I had the opportunity last year to meet a, young, uh, a man who went down and helped in Washington and actually delivered the wreaths uh, at Arlington National Cemetery. And um, it was quite a thing. He, he actually uh, is part of our Drake Volunteers group and went down and offered to read off the name of any veteran that we wanted at the cemetery. And it was very moving. He videotaped it and came back, and our loved ones were remembered at Arlington National Cemetery when they placed the wreaths. So I wanted to 
talk a little bit quickly about um, what I found out about the program. It didn't start till 1992 when a person who had a wreath company had some extras and he always uh, looked up to all the veterans and he decided let's let's put them on veterans graves and it has gone on beyond beyond that now uh, nationally. Um, and what I didn't know is that these wreaths are made of 10 balsam bou bouquets each comprising the um, veterans special 10 special qualities that every veteran embodies. First, the first section of it is their faith in God. The sec second section is their love for each other. The third is their strength, work ethic, and character. Fourth is their honesty and integrity. Fifth is their humility, selflessness, and modesty. Sixth is their ambitions and aspirations. Seventh is their optimism for America. Eighth is their concern for the future. Ninth is their, proud, their pride in their duties. And tenth is their hopes and dreams that didn't always come true, but left them with no regrets. The evergreens symbolize longevity and endurance. The red bow signifies great sacrifice. The forest scent represents purity and simplicity. And the circular shape of the wreath represents eternity. And as you place them at the cemeteries and, and the monuments today, um, it will be a symbol of them, us never forgetting those who have served and have sacrificed, those who continue to serve. And we think of their families as well. You know, you grow up thinking Christmas is the best day in the entire year, but it's also the hardest day for so many people because their loved ones not here with us, whether they're gone a sacrifice during war, or whether they're actually uh, serving away from home now. So may we look at the wreath and remember all of the qualities of our veterans, past and present, and always remember them on Christmas Day and their families. Thank you. I'd like to invite Jeff, our new Drakeit Veteran Service Officer, to come up and speak. He's going to um, uh, explain the table that we have out here, the memorial table we have in front of the podium, and then I'll invite him to make some remarks as well. Good morning, everybody. I'm getting over a cold, so I'm going to try to speak into the mic loud enough that you can hear me, but uh, I may be a little bit froggy. Um, first, I, I want to bring your attention to this table in front of us, and we're going to talk about the symbolism. And what I really want to talk about is not only the symbolism of the table and how that, and, but I want to paraphrase on what Mrs. Gary said about the symbolism of the wreaths, because there's a connection to here, and that connection doesn't go goes beyond the symbolism of the table and the symbolism of the wreaths, because it's a connection that is connected to all of us here in this room today. So the missing soldier table, we call your attention to this small table which occupies a place of dignity and honor. And there's a symbolism of this table. There are four symbols of frailty, compassion, loss, and purity. The table is small, symbolizing a soldier's frailty against his captors. The table is round, symbolizing our our everlasting concern for our fallen comrades and those still missing. The table is set for one, symbolizing the soldier who has not returned from, from uh, battle. The chair is empty and they are missing. They are not here with us. The tablecloth is white, symbolizing the purity of their motives when they answered the call to duty and the purity of heart of a grateful nation. Today there are three symbols of sacrifice, courage, and resolve. A single red rose in a bud vase symbolizes the soldier's sacrifice and the blood that has been shared to ensure others' freedoms. A red ribbon tied around the vase symbolizes the unyielding resolve for an accounting of all those who have not returned. The POW MIA bracelet, worn upon the wrists of thousands whose determination and resolve is to always remember and never forget, for surely they have not for forsaken you. There are four symbols of sorrow and hope. A slice of lemon on a plate represents the bitterness of our service members' fate. Salt sprinkled on the plate represents the countless tears shed for the soldier and the tears of his loved ones whose children may never again hear their whispers, know their touch, or feel their breath on their brow. A single burning candle represents the light of hope and signifies our commitment to light their way home. 
The Bible represents the strength gained through faith to sustain those who are missing, captive or who have been lost, and for those who have loved ones serving that we may have all find uh, peace. There is one remaining symbol of acknowledgement and remembrance, the wine glass. The wine glass is inverted, symbolizing that they cannot toast with us tonight, today, or through this holiday season. They do not have the luxury of partaking of the, of the wine or the juice. They cannot be with their loved ones tonight, and they won't be with us during the holidays. So I want to offer this you know, to, the, to all our fallen and say to the fallen and the missing of our armed forces, may God's peace find you, keep you, and guide you home. May we never forget and always remember that all gave some and some gave their all. But today we're here because the Nam Knights have taken on an endeavor, right, to, to, uh, to present these wreaths to our community, right? And paraphrasing uh, what Mrs. Uh, uh, Colleen said was that the green represents longevity, and the red bro represents sacrifice, and the round shape of a wreath represents our eternity's time. Our Nam Knights, they're our Nam Knights, right? They've taken the lead to dedicate these 12 wreaths and deploy them to various locations in our, within our community. Two will be hanging right here on this hall. And this hall represents all our veterans organizations within our community. So I think that's really be, uh, befitting. This truly symbolizes our connection to each other as veterans and family members and transcends our affiliations to service era or branch of service. We are all Americans and we're all gave some and some gave their all, we as Americans are connected to those who dedicated and gave their lives and paid their lives with the ultimate sacrifice, a sacrifice not in vain, but for the sake of freedom, for the sake of those who they fought alongside of, for the sake of those and, and all of us. So when you see these wreaths, knowing that they sacrificed uh, represents the sacrifices made for all of us, and you see them through our, our, commu our, our community. We want you to not only acknowledge those wreaths, but we want you to actually see them. See them not as a distant acquaintance, and not just as someone else's relative, but rather see them as your own, because they are. Yes, they are to, ma to many, the sons and daughters, husbands and wives, brothers and sisters, grandparents, aunts and uncles, and their loss is a supreme sacrifice. But we too must also remember, must never forget. So it is fitting that we honor them all and cherish their memory, for they are our fallen. They are our American heroes. They do belong to you, to me, and to all of us. Let us remember them and may God bless their families and protect the fondest of memories, and may God bless our United States. And we want to thank the Nam Knights for taking on this endeavor, because they are our veterans, and they represent us, and we are all connected to these symbols. So thank you to the Nam Knights. All right, uh, I'm going to invite um, Dick Dusham. He's the commander of the American Legion. Up, I'm turning the mic down, not because we don't want to hear you, Dick, but I'm hearing some reverb. So no stay on task. Or <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Yeah, as I said, I'm the commander of the American Legion, also the commander of VFW. And I'd like to thank the Nam Knights for coming over here and asking us if they could use space downstairs for their meetings. Because they, since, ever since they've come here and partnered with us, we have done wondrous things. So I thank you. For an example, like Jeff says, these reefs. Now, we've never thought of, boat organization never thought of doing it in our own community. VFW does it, they have a fundraiser for the cost of the wreaths, where they put them, but it's not around here, it's outside Boston, or in uh, Bill Ricca has it. We've never done it here, so I thank you for that. Now the wreaths, and placing this at the cemeteries and the memorials around the town is a good way for our students, or our children, to see what goes on. It's a good teaching tool to tell them, hey, freedom's not free. These veterans paid their lives for you to be free to have what you have today. Now, it's not thought in schools, although it should be. But, you know, so we as veterans go around, we have Memorial Day, 
that we bring it about. We have Veterans Day when we bring it about. And we have a lot of scouts, thanks to Mr. John Cuddy, who come to these events and they participate and they learn and they go back, hopefully, and teach their friends what this is all about. There's not much I can say after Colleen and uh, Jeff covered almost everything you need to say about the race. So I'll just say it brief and say thank you. Thanks, Dick. Uh, and for the record, you followed co me, Colleen, and then Jeff, but that's all right. <laughs> I can see what, I'm just pointing that out, you know. All right. <laughs> I <laughs> uh, get it from everybody. Um, all right. Uh, in batting cleanup today, uh, our good friend uh, Tony Achinsky, appropriately enough. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mike. Um, after following Dick, I've been told that I can't use my hands to talk. So. Um, <laughs> As a, as a United States Army veteran and also a 30-year veteran of the police department, there are many uh, Christmas Eves and Christmas Days uh, that I've worked, and uh, so I certainly appreciate um, you know, what, what we're doing here today. Uh, I hope this is a, a day that uh, will be the beginning of something much uh, uh, bigger. Uh, you know, we, we've got a great crowd today. I, I employ all of you to bring somebody else with you next year so we can double our attendance uh, each year as this goes by. Um, and I'll put my other hat on, my, selectman, my selectman's hat on now. I, I would like to thank uh, the NAM Knights for, for doing this. And uh, as uh, a member of the Board of Selectmen, um, I proudly um, thank you and accept the uh, wreaths uh, that are being presented today. And um, may God bless uh, our, our troops that are out there on Christmas Day uh, and those who have come before us. Thank you. Thanks, we appreciate that. Um, and we do appreciate all the kind words that everybody said. Um, again, we were trying to create something unique, and, and as Tony just said, I hope that this is a seed event. Um, that's something that becomes annual and continues to grow, and it can only get better. Um, it means we need to cook more food next year, but that's, a, that's not a bad thing. Um, what we're gonna do in, in now is we're just gonna wrap up this program. You're all invited to stay. Uh, there's plenty of food. Please uh, continue to eat or take some with you. Put it in your pocket and go on your way. That's We have to get rid of it. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, two groups. Just We have two work details that are just going to take these reeds out and uh, place them at their respective uh, memorials. So, uh, again, thank you for everybody who came out this morning. I know it was an early morning, and we do appreciate the support. All right, well, welcome back. Um, tonight we're going to sit down and talk with Dick Dusham, who is the uh, commander of the American Legion and the VFW post here in Dracut, and Tody Achinsky, who is um, a selectman in town. Yes. And a veteran, uh, both veterans. And um, we're going to talk about some of the more, some of the other things that you've done in your life that, uh, that's <laughs> pertinent and relative. And he's also a member of the American Legion. Sure. And, and you're right, he is. So welcome to you both, and thanks for doing this for us, because we really appreciate you taking time out of your schedule. Hi, Mike. To How are you? Doing great. How are you doing, Mike? Good. So let's introduce yourself, Dick. Um, Dick Dusham, you are, uh, what branch of service were you? I was uh, USNR, U.S. Naval Reserve. Okay. I enlisted uh, with a, when all, while I was a junior in high school. Uh, we had a recruiter came over to school. We had that meeting at the auditorium, and it, it just got my juices flowing. Got home that day and told my father about it, and I said, I'd like to join. That evening, we were down. At that time, they had the reserve unit down at Bedford Avenue in Lowell. Mm -hmm. So we went down, signed up. And the rest was history. Never looked back. Right? Never looked what, back. What year was that? That was 1964. And you served from 64 till when? 
Uh, it's a six-year program, so through six, April of 69. All right. And during that time, were you uh, deployed at all? Or? Yeah. Uh, well, I graduated in June, and in September, I went on active duty for two years. Okay. Served aboard uh, USS Davis, DD-937, a destroyer. With, uh, <clears throat> you had uh, five-inch mounts, three of them. One on the forecastle, one on the aft, and one on the O-1 level, uh, O-1 level aft. There was also twin mount uh, anti aircraft on there. I served both as a uh, storekeeper, but in German G uh, general quarters. Mm -hmm. I ended up uh, passing ammunition from the, uh, <clears throat> oh, what the heck, I forgot what they called it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I passed the MS ammunition out to the guns. And then when we, when we were deployed in Nam, I was assigned down below the folks of the uh, gun mount 51, and I was passing the ammunition there, and that's automatic. So you'd have one side with the ammo, mm -hmm. the other side with the powder. So I had the powder kegs, and the another line with the uh, the ammo, and the ammo was stood about uh, weighed about 75 pounds, and stood about this high, and was shaped just like a bullet. Really? And that's what we uh, we offered the Marines while we were in gunfire support. Mm -hmm. We did that for like 45 days straight at one time. Wow. And uh, I served six months in Nam. But I was also, my first year, that was in, uh, from, we left in January of 66, uh, came back in August of 66. And from February through July of 66, we were not, we were assigned in Nam. Okay. So I did the six months that was required. Yep. And, uh, but before that, I did a Mediterranean cruise which took in uh, Palma de Mallorca, uh, Marseille, France, Laverno, Italy, Naples, Italy. In fact, that year, I spent Christmas in Naples. Did you? Yeah. And we'll circle back to that because I want to hear what your experiences are. And Tony, you were in what sort of what I, I was in the Army. Okay. Uh, I uh, joined the Army in uh, 1971. I kind of always knew I was going to go in the service. My father was uh, a lieutenant in the Army Air Corps you know, during the war, and then my older brother uh, joined the Air Force. He did two tours in Vietnam. Uh, so that's kind of what kept me out of Vietnam, because at the time, they would not send two uh, siblings to the same war zone. Right. I think you can do it now. I'm right. not sure if they, I, as long as they have parental permission, I think they can send two siblings into the same war zone. Uh, but my brother being in Vietnam uh, kind of saved me from going. Uh, and not that I wouldn't have gone. I mean, sure. I actually did join during the Vietnam era, so right. um, you know, I was ready for it. Uh, the, all, all the all the males in, in my family were military, so I, I I knew at a very young age that I was going to go into the military. Yeah. Uh, so I ended up in uh, uh, Germany for the almost my whole hitch, 30, 31 months minus basic training and. AIT. So, um, so I, I, I didn't have any real wartime experience. Uh, I, I was in an administrative capacity um, mm -hmm. when, when we were in Germany, and um, so. And, and the other, the other interesting thing is that um, uh, my brother came home from Vietnam and died of Agent Orange poisoning when he was 33 years old. Uh, and sorry, those yeah. were the days where you know nobody was taking credit for it. Uh, so right. uh, he really didn't uh, didn't reap any, ben any benefits or or even um, you know getting help from the government or, or whatever because he died long before the, it was determined that uh, you know Agent Orange uh, even existed right. actually you know. And, and we seem to be, not to you know, get in deep into that, but we seem to be in the same cycle now where they're talking about the burn pits in Iraq, in Iraq and Afghanistan. And it's a very uh, similar, you know, people are suffering a health uh, uh, penalty for, for just providing some service sure. or for serving in the, in the, in the theater. Right. What was it like to be uh, away from home? You were in Germany. But what was it like to be in Germany during the Christmas holidays and stuff? Uh, well, I, you know, it, it's funny because I, 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 had a, I said a few words on, uh, at Veterans Day. I'm not sure if you were there, Mike. Uh, there were quite a few people uh, this, this last time. And, and uh, you know, I remember, I, I think it might have been Bob Page or, or, or somebody that once said, um, you know, uh, we're more than just old men with funny-looking hats on. Yeah, Talk, talking, about, <laughs> talking about, talking uh, about, you know, uh, the, the Legion and and uh, and all that. And I reminded people on on Veterans Day that, 
you know, all these old men with the funny looking hats were all 17 years old at one time and they were willing to die for you. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I look at a veteran. So, uh, you know, if you go back to when I was in Germany um, during the Christmas holidays, I, I was really just a kid. I was only 17 years old. So not only were you away from home while you were in the service, but you were really just a kid and, and probably not, not used to being away from your family. Right. So it was a very lonely time. Um, and uh, of course, you know, we all were homesick uh, if you did any time at all in, in the military. Um, but I think being young, uh, you know, uh, actually magnifies uh, the fact that you are away from home. Right, right. And Dick, you said you were in uh, Naples? Yeah, well, we spent Christmas in Naples that and, year, uh, the first day I was in. Because we left for the Mediterranean cruise the day after Thanksgiving. So I was home for Thanksgiving, but for Christmas, yeah. I was in Naples. You were in Naples. But I was 18 years old. Right? right, and the first time away from home, so I didn't really experience our loneliness because I was out there having fun. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. Yeah. All right, I was away from the apron sprint. Right, yeah. So I mean, no, go, let's let's have some fun and. And that's what I, that's way I looked at it, and I didn't look at it any other way, but it was just another uh, event in my life or another job, if you sure. will, mm -hmm. you know, and that's it. I mean, I, and I, I think that's pretty true because I, <clears throat> two of my four deployments, I was uh, deployed through the Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays, and the thing that I always remember was that it was just really just another day in theater. I mean, even in Germany, I'm sure there were people going to work that day. Oh, with, sure. You know, um, people had responsibilities, and it's really hard to differentiate. It's a lot different than being at home and being immersed in that um, that Christmas well, trees, wreaths, and presents. Because stuff. you really don't have a holiday in the Navy right. or in the service. Sure. Right. I mean, yeah. you you work every day. Mm -hmm. It's uh, okay. This today we're not going to work. We're going to have uh, it's holiday routine, mm -hmm. like Sunday. That's the only day you have. Because yeah. every other every other day you either had duty on the weekend, or you were all, you were home, or if you were away, then you did something else. But if you were out at sea. It was a working day. That's it. <laughs> Were you able to get any special uh, um, meal or anything on on Christmas or Thanksgiving? Well, yeah, yeah, they did. Uh, they they did a great job. Uh, you know, I, I I don't know how how it was when you were there, Dick, but uh, you know, by by the seventies, they they really got the chow down. Uh, you know, they uh, you know they, when I when I was there, they had Friday nights where you could go in and get a hamburger at ten o'clock at night. Uh, you, you know, which they, they never did back in the day, I guess. Um, well, the Navy had mid rats, so you could. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. The Navy. They were way ahead of us on that. <laughs> but maybe you, we ended up, we loaded fresh food on board. We had fresh meats, fresh milk, and all that. During the holiday? But that was, you know, once you get out at sea, there was also dehydrated food. Yeah. All right, your, your eggs weren't fresh anymore. Okay, your milk wasn't fresh anymore. Sure. You know? Yeah. yeah. But, but we had two sets. We had cooks, we had bakers. So, you know, and then, in fact, it's a funny story because I, my mother used to make liver when I was younger. I hated liver. <laughs> all right? Well, I get in the, I get in the Navy, I get to board ship, and all of a sudden, what did they serve one night? Liver. I said, oh my God. And I'm starved. That's okay. So, man, something you learn in the service. So if you don't eat it, the, the food's going away and you're going to hungry, right? All of a sudden, man, I said, this is good. Said, My mother's going to kill me, right? <laughs> but, and that was the only meal that you could go back to second and thirds. Right. Because a lot of people, a lot of the sailors, you know, on board ship wouldn't even need it. Right? Right. Yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, they, they sort of, uh, the cooks try to uh, schedule when we would have fresh food and when would be the... The fake food right. is what I call You know, I seem to think, uh, you know, during during the holidays, especially on Christmas, they, they would make a special effort to have yeah. turkey and, and all the fixings and uh, stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you, you did get a good meal out of it, even if you did have to sit alone and, right. and, and, and worry about your family back home. All right? I know is I didn't stop because I went in at 125 <laughs> and I came out at 150. Same here. Same here. <laughs> so, were, you, uh, were you able to make contact with your family or have some uh, some well, you write letters back and forth. Right. right. Yeah, you know, it's, it, that it's funny. Because you know, it's before email. Oh, and yeah. Text, oh, yeah. It's I all mean, changed. You know, now. nowadays, you know, you have texting, you have email, and, and it's instantaneous. Yes. I, I remember when I, when I was in the service, uh, you wrote a letter. It took probably <laughs> six weeks to get home, and then it took six weeks to get an answer. So, you know, your life was half over with by the time you, you got a question answered. <laughs> well, we had to go through the fleet post office or the, a the APO. APO yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah, right. You know, FPO for me. So, I mean, right. so you had another stuff. Plus the fact, if you're in the war zone, it gets, you know, 
It's real nice. Sure. Right. Yeah. And, and even in telephone it. calls, forget it. I mean, you, you know, you just couldn't make a telephone call. I mean, you could, but uh, but it was a big uh, to do. You had to go to the local post office, and you know, you had to say over and out while you were on the on the phone. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it we, <laughs> we were in Pearl, and it was a telephone booth. Now today's kids don't even know what that is. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> there is a telephone booth that Superman changed into. Well, that's it. <laughs> I made a phone call on my mother's birthday because it was her birthday and we were in port, so I was able to talk to her then. Yeah. So that's the only, other than that, it was just strictly mail. I remember when we were on Diego Garcia, um, we had access to a satellite phone and you could only talk for, I think it was 90 seconds or two minutes at mm -hmm. the most. So you, High and by. Yeah, pretty much, you know, like checking in and then uh, mm -hmm. you couldn't really get into, into any long-winded discussions. So sure, that was, yeah, yeah. Now, Tony, you, you, you also um, served as a police officer in, in Draken. Yeah, I did 30 years. And Draken, um, yeah. we were talking before the, the camera actually went on about that. Um, we oftentimes forget that that we have service men and women serve in our country, but we also have people serve in our community during the holidays. What was it like to just be on duty during the, during the holidays? Well, you know, I, I think it all goes back to, uh, you know, to, to the younger uh, people, because as you know, as anybody that's ever been in the military knows, our HIP rank has its privileges, <laughs> seniority has its privileges. So it, it always seems that, you know, the guy or the girl that has to work on Christmas Day is the least senior, uh, youngest person and may even have uh, you know a younger family. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so in that's the beginning, you know, that's you, an interesting you know, observation. In yeah. the in the beginning, you have to you know you have to pay your dues. And you know, I was young and I had a young family, so I worked on Christmas and Christmas Eve and Easter Sunday and and all that. Then, as you go up in the rank structure and you, you gain seniority, um, it gets a little bit better. Um, what what I did when I was in the service, I mean, when I was uh, working for the police department, is after. You know, after 10 years, my kids were a little bit older. You know, you just you learn to plan around it. So I would have Christmas on Christmas Eve, and then I would volunteer to work on Christmas Day, so a younger person with younger kids in the family could actually have the day off. Yeah. So, so you know, the town was great uh, relative to um, to holidays, but it all comes back to. Um, you know, the, the, the people that suffer the worst having to work on the holidays are usually the younger people that have younger families. Yeah. So, and, and, and basically, the ones that need to be at home the most. Right, right. right. Uh, now, when you're on, um, on a holiday, it's kind of an all or nothing type of day, isn't it? You, you generally don't get a lot of, a, um, I would think, you wouldn't get a lot of a routine calls if you got a call it was usually something more serious oh yeah yeah for sure um, and uh, you know it was you know sometimes yeah like you're right I mean sometimes it would be very quiet uh, and nothing would happen and other times it would be you know from from the opening gate to, to the end uh, busy all day long <laughs> so uh, you know it just seems seems like at least in the police world uh, sometimes family gatherings aren't as, <laughs> as as nice as they should be, you know. Right, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, um, you're right, Mike. It it, it, um, it is all or nothing. Um, and the other thing that that used to strike me is that um, you know working on Christmas Day, usually, at least back in my day, that, that nothing was open. So I mean, you didn't even know where you were going to get a cup of coffee. Uh, now you know they've kind of relaxed and. And kind of lost the Christmas spirit. You might be able to find a Dunkin' Donuts or a yeah, or, or a McDonald's cool. or something that's open. But uh, for the most part, um, when I was when I was on board, uh, you know, Christmas Day, you, you know, you you were lucky if somebody brought a sandwich to you to the police station. Yeah, right. yeah. and that would probably where your meal came from because sure. I'm already seeing you go around. Most of the restaurants are already put the signs up closed during Christmas right. Day, so <laughs> um, your options are certainly limited. Mm -hmm. um, that's for sure. Dick, to go back to you, um, the, we were talking before the camera started, the, um, the American Legion and the VFW, do they run any uh, particular programs during the holidays that help? Uh, basically, the only thing we have is we have an annual fundraiser like the turkey raffle we just had. Yep. And the VFW, because of the participation of its members, which we only have like 10 or 11, so basically we partner up with the American Legion so whatever event they have, we step in and help there too. Okay. And like I said, most of us are all our Legion members at the same time. Yeah, right. So it, it, there's nothing to do that. But if there's anything special for Christmas, there isn't anything. But nationally, there is. The, they do have the wreaths across America. Okay, and where those 
particular events are held at a veterans uh, cemetery. Okay, not like our town where we have eight cemeteries right. and they all include veterans. Mm -hmm. So if you were to go mm -hmm. to those each cemetery and try to put a reef on a grave of a veteran, you'd be running out of money. Yeah. And you wouldn't have enough donations. Mm -hmm. DFW has donations come in to do those so that every veteran has a reef. Okay, yeah, yeah that makes sense. Um, I just wanted to talk about the Legion before we kind of wrapped up um, or the, the post home here. Post Home is home to a lot of different organizations. Really, yes. is a community building. What what organizations meet and are hosted here at okay. the American Legion? Uh, the American Legion. This post is called Leo C. Rod Post 315. They own the building. Uh, the other organization that meet over here is yourself, the Man Knights uh, Motor Club. Mm -hmm. uh, DFW 93 Post 9307. Uh, the Marine Corps League. Uh, I forgot what number they were, but that's the other organization. Now, the other thing that we do, we also host on Mondays and Wednesday cribbage leagues. Soon to start in January, there'll be a 45 league on Thursday evening. And then we have a function hall, which we're in now, that we try to book, you know, for whatever events a community sure. wants. And it's a great facility. I don't think it's often overlooked when you think about uh, mm -hmm. the local community. There's a lot of competition here just next door, but yeah. um, this is still a great venue when, when it's appropriate. Um, how important to, to let me ask you, uh, Tony, for the, as being represented at the time, how, how important do you think this program is to put these reads out and remind people uh, that we have servicemen and women deployed during the holidays? Oh, I think uh, I think any any time you honor and uh, and and bring to light, uh, you know what uh, what these men and women uh, have done and are doing uh, currently. Uh, I, you know, I think it's a good thing, of course. Um, so yeah, I think it's a, it's an important thing. I, I'm looking forward to uh, you know getting on board and helping you guys out and uh, you know helping get the word out. I'll, I'll be announcing it at the next selectmen's meeting well, for I you. Appreciate that, thank you. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so sure, yeah. yeah. And, and just so everybody knows, this is actually going to be filmed before we do the event, but it's going to, it's going to be <laughs> follow the event, so if there's any confusion on <laughs> timelines. Right. Um, well, I want to thank you both. First of all, welcome home, and thank, thank you, you for your service, and, uh, and you as well. well. Thank you for your service to thank both you, the, Mike, the and country you and the community. You too. Thank you. Um, is there anything that you kind of want to wrap, uh, before we wrap up, that you want to add before we... Well, I'm not sure. When, when is this going to air? <laughs> I, 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 are, 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 we wishing everybody, are we wishing everybody a Merry Christmas? We're going to try and get it out for Christmas. So yeah. Yeah, sure, okay, why well, not? Merry Christmas to everyone. And, and remember the uh, young folks that are out there working on uh, this holiday. Appreciate that. The only thing is, not to, uh, to paraphrase uh, Tony, is that the reefs not only honor the veterans in that cemetery, they also honor the living veterans. Right. Anytime we hold a uh, veteran, holds a event to honor the ones who had their ultimate sacrifice and lost their lives mm -hmm. for this country. It's also an honor to the veteran himself. I agree. The way I say it, have served and continue to serve exactly. our country. So, um, and then uh, the other thing, uh, I lost it. It's not like <laughs> well, you know what? We'll bring you back on. And, uh, there's, there's like uh, a half a page of questions that we never got to that I want to. I would love for you to come back and talk about the Legion and the and whatnot. And and Tony, you are always welcome to come back on. Thank uh, you. Thanks. Uh, it's a pleasure, and I appreciate you both taking time out of your. You're schedule. welcome, Mike. Thanks for Thank your time. Thanks.